In this tutorial, we are going to touch on the basics of a CT head interpretation. Here we have an unenhanced CT head. We look at the brain in three planes. The axial plane, shown here on the bottom left. The coronal plane, shown here on the right of the screen. And the sagittal plane on the top left. This is called multiplanar reformatting or MPR. The axial plane is the most common plane for primary assessment and in some institutions this may be the only one available. Let's look at this in more detail. It is particularly useful for determining the anatomy and location of lesions with the main sulci visible, as well as ease of comparison of the left and right hemispheres. Important sulci to define are the central sulcus, shown here, with the precentral and postcentral gyri. And these can be identified in a number of ways, but the easiest way is to look for the hand knob, which is this omega type shaped area, which is usually very prominent. Carefully look at the edges of the image to look for subtle areas of blood and look within the sulci such as the sylvian fissure here for areas of subarachnoid hemorrhage. It's important to window the scan to make it easier to see blood against the brain parenchyma. It is also useful to assess the basal cisterns shown here with a specific reason to look for subarachnoid hemorrhage, which may have an aneurysmal etiology and preempt further contrast imaging. Let's move on to the coronal plane. This plane is particularly useful for looking for subtle collections, be that blood or pus or fluid. As you can easily see, these structures here representing veins or cortical veins. If there was a collection, these veins would be pushed away from the bone and therefore make it easier to assess acute hemorrhage. In addition, it's also useful to look for collections that are adjacent to the falx, as you can see over here. Furthermore, this view is great for comparing lobes, in particular the temporal lobes shown here here and here to look for asymmetry in diseases such as Alzheimer's and dementia. The last plane to evaluate is the sagittal plane. It's useful to Look at midline structures, for example, the pituitary fossa here, the infundibulum or pituitary stalk, the corpus callosum, which is shown here, and the brainstem. Here we have the characteristic shape of the midbrain, pons and medulla. 
In addition, we can look at the cerebellar tonsils, which are here, which would be seen to be in an inferior or caudal position if there was any tonsillar herniation in the setting of raised intracranial pressure. Now that we've gone through the basic planes, let's move on to assessment. We can start by looking for areas of hemorrhage in all three planes. After this has been done, what we would normally do is to look for great white matter differentiation in stroke. This can be quite tricky, but essentially you are looking for loss of that differentiation between the grey matter and the white matter. which would be lost in a stroke or infarct. As the infarct becomes older, this would then manifest as a low attenuation or dark area. And eventually there would be loss of volume of the brain parenchyma because of neuronal death. It is important to correlate the patient's symptoms with the area of the infarct. For example, the precentral area is concerned with movement, whereas the postcentral gyrus is for somatosensory. Lastly, it's important to review the bones to look for any fractures 